Hello and good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to wish you a very warm welcome to this uplink preview, linking up the next generation of change makers. My name is Sarah Kelly. I'm a TV news anchor and a journalist. I host the main international news program at Deutsche Welle Television in Berlin. And I'm really thrilled that I get to be here with all of you this afternoon um, for this session. So now over the next 45 minutes, we're going to be hearing a lot about Uplink. Uplink is a digital crowdsourcing platform aimed at accelerating progress toward the sustainable development goals. We will be hearing from the World Economic Forum, which is hosting the platform. We will be hearing from the foundational partners, Salesforce, Deloitte, and Microsoft LinkedIn. And we will be hearing from young global change makers who are actually already involved in the platform and they can really tell us from a firsthand perspective what it's been like for them. So, First, though, without any further ado, um, we would like to hear a little bit more about the platform, and we have really the great honor and the great pleasure this afternoon of being welcomed here today by the founder and the executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, Professor Klaus Schwab. Thank you very much, Sarah. I should tell you a little bit the history. Um, why the forum has taken this initiative. Um, the World Economic Forum has concluded with the uh, United Nations a major uh, strategic cooperation agreement. And um, when um, we signed this agreement together with uh, Secretary General uh, Guterres and uh, uh, Deputy Secretary um, Amina Mohamed, uh, we discussed how could the forum best contribute to the objectives of uh, the global sustainability, uh, the, the goals which the uh, UN has set to be reached by 2030. And there are so many different initiatives um, related to the Sustainable Development Goals and the Forum itself, of course, has a number of those uh, initiatives going on. But what is missing are two things. The first one is we should have those initiatives not just coming from uh, enlightened business leaders uh, sitting here in the room or from governments. We have to engage people. And people, particularly startups, young people, who now to a certain extent are on the streets to protest, but they have ideas and we have to give them the means to translate their concerns into action. To translate their concerns into action. Now, we cannot invite everybody to Davos, but um, today we are living in the age of the fourth industrial revolution and we have to think of digital tools. And the idea was created, why not to um, have a digital platform available, which would really allow people engagement. And uh, by the way, the name Uplink means linking the people up to the objectives of the Sustainable Development Goals. So I approached um, some of the partners of uh, the World Economic Forum and I'm so grateful um, that I uh, found open ears and uh, the enthusiasm and the commitment really to contribute to make such a platform happen. And um, Mark, I think you were the first one uh, encouraging us and um, uh, Brunit, and Jana, I remember when we talked about it in summer, you, uh, you provided full commitment. And then, of course, um, Alan Blue, um, um, you brought uh, LinkedIn, Microsoft on board. So bringing those people together under the leadership um, of um, my colleague, uh, Dominic, um, uh, we, we were able to develop a first platform which we will in some way inaugurate today. So for the forum, it's a very important, I would say nearly historical moment. Um, if you define the forum as a 
multi-stakeholder platform. We have everybody on board, but what we do not have on board yet is the power of people. And with Uplink, we are confident that we can reinforce with many good ideas what we are doing here, uh, advance our uh, different initiatives. And first, we were thinking for quite some time what would be the first area where we could show the power of such a digital instrument and of such a digital platform. And we said um, oceans, because um, um, there is the Ocean Summit of the UN uh, coming up this year. And also we knew we have to integrate, and I'm very happy with uh, the young generation, we have to integrate the young generation as much as possible. And um, you will hear from, from some of our uh, uh, change makers um, how they play already a very important role in um, making sure that um, Uplink will be a great success. So thank you all for coming here for this very important moment. Thank you particularly our partners and um, I, I think we, we have started maybe here a very uh, important and interesting journey with quite some consequences for the world because if I would summarize again what Uplink is, Uplink is a digital platform to integrate, accelerate and aggregate the goodwill the innovative spirit, the entrepreneurship of all people behind the SDGs. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Professor Schwab. From concerns into action, the power of the people, we've heard now what Uplink is. Do we want to know what it looks like? Yes, um, we actually have a great treat now. We're going to be joined by um, an engineer from Microsoft who has been involved in the platform. She's also a global shaper from the Casablanca Hub. So please, without any further ado, um, join me in welcoming to the stage Fatima Azihara El Azuzi. Thank you, Sarah. So from the early stages of Uplink, when it was just an idea, I was involved in co-designing it, actually, with a group of global shapers. And um, also in the past few months, I was part of the development uh, process of uh, Uplink, bringing in my technical perspective as an engineer at Microsoft, uh, but also the lens of inclusion. Uh, this is an area that I work on as part of the global shapers community. And the goal here is to make sure that Uplink, from the beginning, is inclusive of the people we tend to forget about and who are usually overlooked. So this is really important. Um, so we have Melati with us here today. And uh, kids might be pe people who bring projects that really advance the SDG. So she was a kid, 12-year-old kid, when she uh, had the idea of banning um, plastic bags in Indonesia. And last year, the ban was actually implemented. So in the same way, maybe the next uh, coming innovation would come from maybe a person from Venezuela who doesn't have a high school diploma. Do we think about that person? Or from a woman with a disability in Morocco? or from a Syrian refugee in Lebanon. So the goal here is we want these people to be members of the Uplink community from day one. And um, I am really delighted to share with you, um, to take you today through uh, a preview of what Uplink looks like. Uh, will look like actually next month when uh, it is uh, launched uh, as a pilot to the public. So we can pause the video. And um, I will start with the home page. So from the home page, you can already have clear, uh, cl uh, clear a call to action where you can take, uh, take in actions uh, from um, the beginning. And uh, we have um, the uh, topics, so it's organized by topics. And as you see, Professor Schwab mentioned ocean, SDG number 14. And we have here the UN special envoy uh, for the ocean with us. Uh, so that will be our example. And you have a lot of content, including actually articles from the forums 
strategic intelligence uh, platform, so curated articles, as well as what are the challenges that people have uh, submitted re in relation to a topic. So you can sp uh, choose a topic that speaks to you. Let's um, take oceans. So under each topic, we have a number of challenges. So we see here two challenges uh, that you can actually take action on and contribute on. So we have some supporting material that you can use that's related to that challenge. So let's delve in into a specific challenge on the ocean. So under each challenge, we have a number of issues. So those issues are issues that you can tackle by bringing your own contribution. So you can contribute uh, to the platform by submitting your ideas, and th your ideas are then reviewed and curated by uh, the forum's expert uh, network, network. And the best uh, uh, contributions are highlighted. We see here Badr, who's an entrepreneur with us today, so his uh, project is highlighted, and uh, him as a contributor as well. So so um, let's look at what a contribution page looks like in Uplink. So this is an example of a contribution page of Butter's project. So this answers questions like, what issues are we addressing? And how can we scale up this project? So any information that you can have that supports in uh, this solution. So. Uh, what can you do actually as a user when you use um, Uplink? You can click on the Take Action button, which allows you to contribute in two ways. Either sharing your perspective or idea, so something conceptual about this challenge, or if you have a, a ready solution or you have a startup that you founded, you can submit it as well. You can make your contribution public, or you can keep it private until it's reviewed by the experts. So, we submit this, we hope that the experts are going to approve this and take it to the next level. So, what's next? How do we actually make impact? So, impact is made around action groups. An action group is just a number of people who get around the same challenge and they connect and they work together to advance it. So, you see here that uh, the community can uh, connect and interact with each other to advance this project. So. Um, we hope that you will all be Uplink users very soon, so it's very easy to do. You can, all you need is an email address or a phone number. And if you are a LinkedIn user, uh, it makes it easy for you and makes it faster for you to get down to work because it pulls your um, content. So we have here Melati's example. She's a LinkedIn user and her data is pulled from, from LinkedIn. So she is ready from here to start engaging and taking action. So, um, Uplink is for anyone. Anyone can join um, Uplink, and uh, I look forward to using it to advance the cause that, uh, one of the causes that matters to me, which is investment in mental health. I encourage you all to do this for the causes that are closest to your hearts, and please don't forget that I'm, the inclusion message I shared at the beginning, let's not forget to invite the underrepresented people to join the community from the beginning. Thank you. Thank you so much to Fatima. Um, Uplink would not be possible without partnerships. And we're going to be hearing now from the foundational partners. Um, we're going to begin with Salesforce. We are joined by Mark Benioff. He is the chairman and the co-chief executive officer of Salesforce and a member of the board of trustees at the World Economic Forum. Mark, thank you. Thank you. All right, well, thank you very much. I don't need the step, I think, right? That's right here. Uh, how's everybody doing? Klaus, I want to just thank you so much for the World Economic Forum, and I want to congratulate you on the 50th year. You have shown us the power of stakeholder capitalism with your vision that we must be about all stakeholders and not about just shareholders. We owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to you, and I am fully convinced after attending even just this first day of the conference, as well as the other programs uh, that I have been through now, that capitalism as certainly I knew it, that I have been trained on, went to school on, is dead. That there is a new capitalism, a stakeholder capitalism, exactly as you've described it, a more fair, more sustainable, more equitable capitalism. So thank you, Klaus, for giving us this tremendous gift. Thank you very much. And really, that's why I am so excited about Uplink. You know, Klaus and I have been working on the Fourth Industrial Revolution Centers for uh, quite a few years now. We have them all over the world. I like to call them the franchisees of uh, 
the World Economic Forum because there are outposts where our members come to um, brainstorm and convene and understand all the technology that's happening. But what happens in these centers, and there's one very close to my uh, home in the Presidio in San Francisco, they are very much not workshops, but they are do shops. They are the world's greatest experts who are coming together to show us where the world is going and we're able to create policy, new ideas, will transform whether they're corporations or governments. It's been phenomenal. But the thing that has been most inspiring about the Fourth Industrial Revolution Centers is the youth. To see these incredible global shapers and young leaders come in and see the power of the technology, but then say, I can do something with this to improve the state of the world. The very mission of this organization to improve the state of the world and to see fourth industrial revolution technology coupled with the use to do that, well, that's inspiring because that really opens the next door for Klaus's vision, which is Uplink. Why Uplink is so important is because when we look at these key global issues, like oceans, for example, of course, these are tremendous um, uh, imperatives that we have to get our minds around. But there are key stakeholders all over the world that can be united through this digital technology platform. And you could saw it in the technology. You understood it when Klaus was saying um, uh, what the initial vision is. But to see it come together is so powerful. So I'm so excited to see this continuation past just what the Fourth Industrial Revolution Centers have become to see this digital convening platform to address these key issues like oceans or like we heard today in Klaus's opening remarks. We now have a program, One Trillion Trees, 1T.org, where we are going to convene on a global basis, corporations, governments, nonprofits, to focus on planting one trillion trees and reducing or eliminating two over 200 gigatons of carbon out of the atmosphere. As we know, carbon, of course, on the planet and the universe is actually a constant. It, it's, it's humans who are moving the carbon around, and we have the ability to extract that carbon directly out of the atmosphere through the One Trillion Tree Initiative, and it's something that I also expect to see rapidly emerge on Uplink. So, Klaus, thank you for guiding us forward and uh, for showing us this tremendous vision. We're very grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much um, to Mark for that. We're going to hear next from another foundational partner, and that is Deloitte. We're especially going to hear how um, Uplink aligns with the core values of Deloitte. So please, without any further ado, join me in welcoming to the stage. Um, we have Puneet Renjan, Chief, Global Chief Executive Officer of Deloitte. I wanted to get that correctly. I hope I did. <laughs> Thank you. And Mark, I need this. I wasn't born with your good looks and your height. <laughs> I want to start by uh, echoing what Mark said. I Klaus, <laughs> uh, Klaus uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the World Economic Forum. Congratulations on 50 years. And thank you for this great team. Dominic and the entire team here have done a great job uh, on this. Um, I represent Deloitte, and Deloitte believes passionately that business uh, has a dual role in society. It has to be a force of good. And we exhibit that every day with 300,000 professionals going to work to try and make a positive impact for the clients that they serve and for the communities that they live and work in. 300,000 individuals that contribute their skills every day whether it is making a commitment to try and take 50 million people out of poverty or work on initiatives like Uplink. We believe that this is not only the right business thing to do, it is the right thing to do, and it has been a key part of our DNA and our core values. But one thing that we have learned is that despite our size, despite our passion, we cannot do this alone. And some of the issues that uh, Professor Klaus has raised and that Mark talked about, we believe that we need to collaborate 
with entities like the WEF, like Salesforce, LinkedIn, Microsoft, to try and address these issues. Issues like climate, like income inequality, like poverty. That's why we've collaborated with the WEF for the last 20 years. And when Professor Klaus called me over the summer and said, Mark is going to work with us on Uplink, would you sign up? I said, yes, absolutely. For the last number of months, we've been working with Salesforce, with Microsoft, LinkedIn, and with WEF, contributing our deep technical skills because we believe that Uplink has the potential to try and get that community together to address some of these issues that are so critically important for us to address, not only for this generation, but for the next generation. So we're very excited to be part of this. Thank you for giving us this opportunity, and we're all in. Thank you so much, um, Puneet, for that. And I mentioned that there were three foundational partners. Um, we're actually going to be hearing from the third um, with our closing remarks today. So we have Alan Blue here from, from LinkedIn, um, and he will give our closing remarks a little bit later in the program. But first, Mark mentioned that one of the biggest inspirations to him was really hearing from the young people. So we're going to do that now. I'm going to go over to this side of the stage um, because we are going to have a conversation now um, with people who are really on the front lines when it comes to LinkedIn. So Malati Weizen is joining us. Malati, please come up to the stage. Malati is the first Uplink ambassador. Um, she also happens to be um, an activist herself. She has two organizations, not just one. Um, one is called Bye Bye Plastic Bags and the other one is called Youthtopia. And I know you're gonna tell us all about that and how you're using the Uplink platform in just a few moments. Um, but first I wanna welcome onto the stage Bader Adrissi, also joining us. Bader is the co-founder and chief executive officer of Atlan Space in Morocco. You're going to tell us what that is. Um, he's also an entrepreneur involved in the development phase of the platform. We saw you a little bit earlier, in fact, as part of that presentation. So um, we got to see a little bit of your work already. Um, and Malati, I, I mentioned that you um, are the first Uplink ambassador. So perhaps, you know, we can start to talk about you know, why this platform means so much, especially for your generation. And then we'll hear a little bit more um, about how it's playing out. So why is this so important for you? Well, um, I think something that really resonated with me was that Uplink wanted to include the younger generation. And, um, you know, I, I kept getting asked the question of, well, why is it important to include the younger generation? And for that, I was kind of thinking, well, where do I start? You know, young people are fresh. We have bright new ideas, and we're willing and ready to be part of the decisions that are being made today. But also, in the time that we're living in, especially right now with all of the issues happening and the challenges that we're facing in today's time, you know, young people, the unique aspect that we have is that we don't look at it as a burden, but more as an opportunity. And I think that this digital platform will allow us to be taken, well, have our co contributions and have our ideas be taken seriously and really connect it with a, a wealth of knowledge of traditional business leaders, um, innovators, uh, investors, and really have this space where young people um, can feel like they are being heard. Matter, would you say you're being taken seriously? I mean, you're, you're Uplink's first registered yep. entrepreneur. You've had experience with the platform. First of all, how did you come to get involved um, and even find out about Uplink? And, and how has it been playing out so far? Yeah, so uh, we, were, we discovered Uplink through uh, our membership in uh, Catapult Ocean. Uh, Catapult Ocean is an impact accelerator uh, that has a deep focus on the ocean. And the uh, they are also one of the founding accelerator partners of Uplink. So we were introduced to the project by Catapult Ocean, and uh, we started discovering uh, the, the platform as a test user during the deployment and development uh, phase. And it was really interesting for us uh, to discover that one of the main focuses for the platform for the moment is the ocean, uh, a challenge that we are currently addressing with our solution. And uh, one of the road blockers for uh, sustainability of the ocean is illegal fishing. And we believe that with our technology, we're uh, able to support government to fight illegal fishing 
uh, by helping them understand what's happening on very large marine areas. For that, we develop artificial intelligence that allows drones to be fully autonomous and monitor very large marine areas. So it's really about taking action and doing something. And so uh, during the review, uh, we filled the, the form for uplink and the, the reviewing, uh, during the reviewing process, our technology was identified as a high potential uh, innovation uh, solution. So we were invited to join the, the group of uh, drone technology for good. And uh, uh, we, were, uh, we were very happy with that. And Milati, um, you know, to Bader's point, perhaps you can also tell us, because I mentioned that um, you have two organizations yourself, mm. Bye Bye Plastic Bags, Utopia. Um, you know, given Bader's experience and, and what you've seen playing out so far, how do you envision that you might engage with the platform? So one of the things that has happened for me in my last seven years being an, a frontline activist with Bye Bye Plastic Bags and then actually achieving a change within regulation back home in Bali, um, I kept getting the same question of young people all around the world, how can we do what you do? And this is where Youthtopia, our new project, really comes in to help empower young people through a peer-to-peer -peer education problem. And with Uplink as an inaugural ambassador, something that I really am excited about is to get into this space with Uplink um, through a youth partnership on seeing how we can really curate this space um, more for the young people. And um, you mentioned that they can do what you do. Um, the way that they can do what Malati does is actually, and I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen this slide sort of to the left of us here. Um, there's the link on the bottom, uplink.wefforum.org. So if you do have expertise, um, that is how you can submit things and, and share them. So um, that is indeed actionable. Um, but I'm curious how you feel. I mean, we, we saw, um, the foundational partner speaking a little bit earlier. We saw how important this was as a vision for um, the founder and the executive chairman of the World Economic Forum. I mean, there's really clearly robust support for this platform. I mean, how does that, that make you feel as an entrepreneur so, um, engaging with it? So it's really interesting for us because we're facing a lot of issues. Being a, a startup that is trying to have an impact is really challenging. Accessing funding, accessing government, is really challenging. And we believe that Uplink can provide us with the expertise such as uh, Jim Leap here, and uh, experts such as Jim Leap, and expertise to really scale the technology and scale geographically. And what's really interesting by saying scale the technology and geographically is that Uplink is not only about the ocean. It also addresses different SDGs. And our technology being flagged as uh, high, uh, high potential innovation uh, with the group uh, for drones uh, technology for good, we're able to address other uh, SDGs such as uh, deforestation, providing humanitarian support, uh, distressed population, illegal mining, and so on. Um, Malati, you're the first ambassador, as we mentioned. I mean, what's so exciting about that for you? And I mean, what are, what are you planning? What are you going to do? I mean, I'm really, <laughs> I'm so honored as well, but also just to see how this is really opening a path for more young people like myself. Um, and, and something that, you know, the question that you asked about um, seeing all the partners behind Uplink and just this enthusiasm that was coming, it really ref re actually reflects the younger generation very well. Um, and it's exciting, it's refreshing to see because um, we need a space like this that is able to connect the dots. And I think that that is what Uplink is doing, is creating this digital platform where all of the knowledge and ac um, is accessible to people and suddenly solutions seem so much more closer to our fingertips. Um, Bader, you mentioned um, your initiatives with illegal fishing, for example. Okay, let's take, let's take it beyond <coughs> that now. Mm. Um, how is Uplink potentially enabling you to take your technology, your initiative, what you're doing beyond that? So going beyond illegal fishing is really about uh, visibility. So understanding what uh, government problems are, what what's are the challenges that are faced by, by those governments. And we believe that Uplink is really building connections to understand what's happening and also get the resources to resolve those issues. It's not, it's not only us, but it's a partnership that we're building through uh, Uplink to provide solutions to really 
uh, critical issues that humanity is facing today. Um, I mentioned that we're all going to have the opportunity here to be engaged, um, and in fact, we want to hear, hear from all of you, um, because we know that there's so much expertise in the audience, there's really um, a, a breadth and a depth of expertise. Um, I saw all of you who signed up, <laughs> so I can indeed affirm that. Um, so if you have a comment, or perhaps even a question, um, we would love to hear from you. The floor is open, just raise your hand, and um, if you could just give your affiliation and a little bit about your work. Um, before you speak, that would be greatly appreciated. Right here in the front. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, my name is Mar Njordbauer. I'm the CEO of Catapult Ocean, and we're very proud to have worked closely with the WEF team on Uplink uh, the past half year. Um, as as Bada mentioned, we invested and support ocean tech startups, and we built a global ecosystem. And to work with Uplink here is a fantastic way for us to really expand that ecosystem and connect decision makers and potential customers, potential philanthropists and investors with these impact startups. Uh, so I encourage other incubators, accelerators, also investors and people with competency to contribute to this uh, platform. Fantastic, thank you so much. I saw another hand go up right next to you. Thank you. My name is Alicia Darsena. I want to greet, of course, Ambassador Thompson. Um, we are establishing a very interesting SDG gateway in Latin America and the Caribbean, which is obviously Spanish and English. I wonder how can we connect, you see what I mean? So that whatever we are doing, which is what countries are doing, what UN agencies are doing, what NGOs are doing, what everybody's doing around SDGs, I would love to see if we can link, because this could link to another language, which is Spanish, and to a very large community. We're talking about 680 million people. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we just heard, actually, that uh, we have Ambassador Peter Thompson here in the audience. Um, he is the UN Special Envoy for the Oceans, so we would love to hear more from you. Yeah. Um, look, I'm so impressed with what we're seeing here. Um, I was considering uh, ways of getting myself cloned because this message about <laughs> what's going on in the ocean, you know, one man can't do it. I'm in two countries every week, have been for the last three years. Uh, but this is the answer. I don't need to be cloned. Uh, the, the, all those things which I'm in, talking to uh, people about in countries can be done through Uplink now. I'm really excited about this. Look, I'll, I'll ask a question to the curators maybe. Um, if you look at the ocean's problems, they basically fall into you know, three or five areas, you know, marine pollution, fisheries, uh, the, the, uh, the, the physical nature of the ocean, you know, acidification, warming, uh, deoxygenation. And, and there are communities which are interested just in those areas, because that's what they tend to specialize in, you know, the fisheries community, for example, we're hearing about now. How are you going to curate those? So that if I'm just interested in marine pollution, um, do I get into a kind of family here of others who are just interested in marine pollution somehow? Thanks. Thank you. Do we... Yep. Um, Dominic, would you like to respond to yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, maybe our colleague from uh, Salesforce uh, can. Uh, Claudio, you've been looking at this issue of communities. Um, so, hello. Claudio Crivelli from Salesforce. Uh, so, to answer your question, yes. So, at the behind the scene, uh, we are going to create a community of experts so subject matter experts, issue experts like uh, Jim Leap, for instance, or other people uh, related to the Friends of Ocean Action or Benioff Ocean Foundation to curate all the ideas, startup that come up according to the roadblock that will be published. All right. We're going to hear from Jim Leap now, one of the leading scientists on the oceans yeah, so, um, at Stanford. First of all, I think we should hold on to the cloning option, just, just saying. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm at Stanford. I direct the Center for Ocean Solutions there and been involved with the forum and all these things. I, I just want to say congratulations to the forum and to the founders and then particularly to Fatima and Malati and Bader for bringing this to life. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And I, so as, a, as someone who spends all his time on oceans, I should just say two things. I mean, one is there has never been a greater opportunity for innovation with all the data and technology coming to us now about what's happening in the oceans and what we're doing to them. And there's also, of course, never been a more urgent need for that. And it's hard to imagine better hands to put that in than, the, than these hands. 
So for, for me, as, a, as an old guy, that's super exciting. Um, but, and so one thing, just as a question, I mean, I'd be really curious, both of you guys think ambitiously, right, about making change in the mm -hmm. world. And you've talked about expertise, you've talked about visibility coming from this platform, but how, what do you need from the platform? How do you see taking these great ideas that you have to the kind of scale that you dream of? Yes. Maybe, maybe Bader, you can start because you're actually using it. Yeah, so actually the, there are a lot of initiatives all over the world. And those initiatives, some of them are really, really interesting. But they don't have access to expert resources. They don't have this visibility. And I strongly believe that such a platform can really enable them to scale because those uh, initiatives will be vetted by our creators, experts. So once a really interesting idea is popping up, they will have the necessary monitoring, coaching, follow-up, uh, expertise, uh, access to decision makers and so on that would allow them to have a real global impact. Because what we've been seeing lately is that there were a lot of initiatives going on, and this is a problem that we're actually facing. Uh, there are a lot of initiatives, but they're small. So uh, the, the, the model today is that there's a lot of money going to NGOs to do pilots, but there is no follow-up on scaling on those pilots because those NGOs doesn't have the mechanism to, to, to follow up on those pilots. And this is the whole difference be between being for-profit and non-profit organization. Being for-profit means that you, it's in your DNA to scale up, to go beyond the, the first pilot and scale and be profitable. And this is the big difference that I see in Uplink. So enabling those ideas, those projects, those journeys to scale once they prove that they are really interesting. Malati, what, do you th what would you like to see? What do you need? Um, well, I think you were really spot on on ex exactly explaining um, that communication channel once it's vetted and having that entire process um, where, where we are then connected to either action groups or specific um, experts that can actually help all of these <coughs> ideas turn into a reality. Okay, great. Anyone else? The floor is open. Um, hi, I'm Erij from the al -Waha Venture Capital Fund of Funds from Bahrain. And I think from our perspective as an investor, especially into venture, I think one area that I think Uplink will definitely help support is building that kind of awareness that projects that actually do tackle the SDGs can actually still be profitable and venture capitalists can actually put their money into this. Um, we've seen a huge interest in impact investors, but a lot of the time they can't find like-minded people. They struggle to find people that actually believe that an impact uh, project will actually make money and bring back money to their investors, especially if they run venture funds. And I think um, Uplink will help build awareness, connect investors with other like-minded investors, and be able to, to find people such as uh, Bedr and yourself to, to be able to do this. We have time for just one more comment if somebody has one. Um, oh, no, I saw two. Okay, we're going to get both of them in. Mm -hmm. So, back there and there. Hi, Melati. I'm Uni Lubis from EDN Times from Indonesia. I'm really proud uh, about your work and your colleague in Global Sharper. My question is, or probably not a question, what do you need to make sure that Uplink get more and more engagement in Indonesia as the first uh, global ambassador? What do you need? Because I think I'm, I came from the media. I think the media mm -hmm. should support this uh, initiative, innovative. Definitely. Thank I mean, you. off the top of my head, and I'm going off script here, but um, I think definitely Indonesia is an incredible um, platform. You know, even being one of the youngest nations, the network that we've built with Youthtopia and Bye Bye Plastic Bags over the year, probably um, a launching ceremony where we can get uh, a couple of key players involved and actively using uplinks. I mean, talk about the, the tech startups in Indonesia, the innovators and entrepreneurs that we have within our country, um, just introducing this in a really proper way um, to our nation. Fantastic. There was one more quick comment and then we have to move on. I'll try to be very quick. <laughs> I'm, I'm very happy to see the presentation of what we have in our plank. I'll con congratulate everybody in continuation of what my colleague just said. Uh, to succeed this platform, it could be maybe a successful story for, our, for everybody else to save the planet. Because I think what we need here, it is just engagement of the decision makers here in the edge of the platform companies. This platform can be the, 
the platform where you find the solutions and implementation. So I, I would love to see the governments around here and mm -hmm. using this and maybe the copying in their countries to using in the next level for their inclusive governance in a wider societies. Thank you very much. So it's a great example. I, we should worry, I, I not do everything to succeed this because it is like the future for our societies. Thank that you. sounds like a call to action. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, I think we, can, yeah. <laughs> we can move on to our closing I'll, remarks after I'll that. I'll do the yeah. following way. I'm challenging everybody to work this, to identify the solutions and provide actions and advocate to make it more and more and more every day in every places. That's it. Thank you so much. Let's see what it will be. Thank you so much. Um, we have time just now for our closing comments, and we're going to go over to Alan Blue, who is, who is yes, Alan, it's you. <laughs> um, uh, he is, of course, um, uh, co-founder and vice president of products at LinkedIn, and he's just going to give us some closing remarks. He's one of the foundational partners that we mentioned earlier. Um, so, Alan, we look forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you. Um, so... Uh, Thank you very much for having us and including us in the development of, up, of Uplink. So um, I hope you can see, you can all see me. Um, so uh, I think one of the things which uh, we have learned uh, at LinkedIn for many years, and we've known it for a long time, is that networks are actually fundamental to our success. So almost everyone in this room would be able to say, ah, I know a time when a person reached out to me or a person was available to help me reach my goals, whatever they might actually be. Um, at LinkedIn, we have noticed that some people have these strong networks, this set of resources they can call upon, and some people do not. We call it the network gap. And that network gap is something which prevents people who are otherwise tremendous contributors from finding a path to be successful. When we saw it, we tried to do something about it. So we began to reach out to the members on LinkedIn who have identified themselves as people who would like to mentor others. And we have millions of these people on LinkedIn. And we connected them on an ad, sort of on a by hand basis with some of the people who needed networks. And they had the most amazing time. These mentors got together with these individuals, spent time, maybe just had coffee with them or invited them over to the office, and almost all of them ended that process by sharing some resources, some network, some connection with that young person, typically a young person, um, who they had worked with. This is what Uplink promises. Uplink promises a similar mechanism. In this case, connecting with and providing resources, connections, funding, ideas, knowledge to a group of entrepreneurs who are attempting to attack some of the most, the most important crises and opportunities that we face as a planet. So this announcement today is not simply a here it is, but it's also a challenge to all of us. All of us need to reach out and find one of these entrepreneurs. I only ask for one. <laughs> who you think is doing something interesting that you want to find out more about. Reach out to that person. Use the platform to locate that, uh, that entrepreneur who's working on, as they said, a cause you care about. At LinkedIn, we call this the plus one pledge. But at Uplink, everyone who is here attending, attending this conference, watching this live stream, should find just one person who they can help. Because together, we have more than enough resources to make these entrepreneurs successful. Mm. Mm. So with that, thank you very much again for including us and to the team here at the forum and at Deloitte and at Salesforce for building it and making it a reality. And if you do have those resources that Alan just uh, mentioned, you can actually um, very conveniently go to the address over there, which is uplink.wefforum.org. Just a quick note um, before we go is that um, tomorrow there are actually three Uplink sessions. So if you are interested in this, you can feel free to attend them. They're, both, they're all in the Ice Village. Um, there's one on food systems, on sustainable cities, 
and on education. So thank you so much from the foundational partners. Thank you so much um, to the forum. And thank you so much for the global shapers here on the stage. And thank you so much to all of you for your contributions.